we are good to go hello and welcome in uh, a nursing webinar session it is going to be very short 30 minutes and myself shanti as your speaker and as you all know the onset of monsoon has started and let us discuss its tips and precaution prevention from none other dr mv rao garu who is our highly eminent compassionate clinician senior consultant physician general medicine from somaji gora unit i welcome you sir thank you very much shanti ji thank yes. you very much for the great words yes yeah. and uh, as uh, just uh, we are looking at this slide it is the unpredictable season of sunshine humidity uh, heavy rainfall and gusty winds with a lot of bursts so yeah. now this is uh, the first insight from you we would like to understand is as we know monsoon menace is challenging and a lot of ip patients are coming with high fever headache vomiting diarrhea and etc now that the season has started what types of cases are we experiencing sir yeah as you as you know in a year if you look at the number of patients the footfall into the many hospitals that be small or medium or tertiary care hospitals this is the season where we see maximum number of patients not patients the reason is that the monsoon brings not only Uh, coolness and joy, also some diseases because this is not only for human beings, also for viruses, bacteria, and fungi because they thrive better in this season. And also that we get a fresh water, most of it get contaminated in a country like India, so we get diseases. And and also mosquitoes, they now really breed to maximum, and we get all diseases. So you get diseases because of change in the environment, like uh, flu or viral diseases, asthma. Yes. and we get diseases because mosquitoes like mosquito borne disease like dengue malaria chikungunya and also we get diseases water borne diseases because of the contamination of water like you get cholera you get diarrhea you get jaundice all sorts of things you get because of these uh, uh, change in the weather yeah. so as i told you this is the season where the patients almost double in the outpatients and also double in the in the patient census So now uh, we are looking at the common health hazards uh, risk during monsoon, and as you were mentioning, waterborne diseases are due to prolonged water logging and contamination, and Indian road scenarios are also like this. So, uh, like disease condition like hepatitis, cholera, typhoid, and fever, how can we treat waterborne diseases if someone in our family gets infected? And also, drinking boiled water is essential, sir. Yeah. Uh, the waterborne diseases uh, possibility can be prevented with simple precautions. If you look at the jaundice, hepatitis A and hepatitis E, out of all the viruses, what we have, hepatitis A and E come through the food or waterborne. So to prevent those, as it as you told, you must take a clean water. So always better to have the clearly boiled and uh, filtered water. Otherwise, uh, a bottled water, water. from a good company so and try to avoid water from the outside like from wells from the sometimes we used to take water from the tanks so that should be avoided and also always keep you no know, your water container covered with a good lid otherwise yeah. these sometimes these uh, uh, the uh, sometimes this can be contaminated so always uh, have a water stored in a proper place and uh, possible always boil and cool if not possible always as i told you take a bottle of water so if you take all these because since you also can prevent hepatitis a not only hepatitis a and e and also can prevent e. typhoid yes. cholera and most of the diarrhea so yeah. diarrhea are very common in season like tuberculosis salmonellosis and other bacterial viral viral uh, diarrhea so we can prevent them so water clean water is very very important and when we are talking about the very common likely risk is water vector borne diseases which is again you know the the colonization of vectors are you know they breed yeah. very uh, good mm -hmm. in the water atmosphere and likely you know admissions related uh, cases like malaria dengue and chikungunya and uh, uh, all viral fever so what are the primary uh, you know mosquito borne diseases uh, prevalent during the monsoon and how soon we can identify i think i'm sure yeah. the, your your opds are getting higher and uh, every day yeah. you are getting a lot of calls about the personalized care sir yeah what is yeah. your insight on that yeah as you as you say that we already we are getting a lot of case of these dengue patients say dengue already started coming to our hospital we are seeing them in op and some are requiring even hospitalization 
So vector borne diseases are very common during monsoon because of the breeding of mosquitoes. So if you look at the these diseases, the commonest is dengue, followed by malaria and chikungunya. So sometimes so these mosquitoes can also can cause encephalitis. So this season, of course, dengue sometimes comes an epidemic in once or two or three years. So last two years it was not there that much. I think this year, because we are seeing case already, I think I am expecting it's going to be a big epidemic this year. So to prevent dengue, it's, uh, it's uh, very important because dengue mosquitoes, the mosquitoes which carry dengue, usually uh, breed in the fresh water. They're called Aedes aegypti mosquitoes. They breed in the fresh water, particularly yeah. in the household, like your uh, flower pots, air candy coolers, water tanks, sometimes the, the bottles and the sometimes the empty coconut so shells or tires which we throw them on the ground, all these things can uh, contain water and they can, small pools of water can give a good breeding place for these mosquitoes. So to prevent these mosquitoes breeding, you must always empty them, see that your surroundings are clean. Another good thing about these Aedes aegypti uh, mosquitoes is that they cannot fly for more than 100 meters during their lifetime. So if you can creep your surroundings around 100 meters around you, these mosquitoes cannot reach you. And they usually bite in the daytime. So yes. see that you cover you know, your uh, hands and feet with a good uh, cloth, particularly children. So they should have a good socks when they go to school. And also they should have a long sleeve shirt so to prevent mosquito bites. And also have mosquito nets around your home and also um, yeah, in water tanks. So apart from that, of course, we also see the malaria in the season, chicken chikungunya. The only problem is that the general public, whenever they get the, the fever during the season, yes. they tend to take an antibiotic. So don't do that. Get a proper infection done and go for the uh, proper treatment from a qualified doctor. And uh, also the respiratory infections are very, very challengeable during the season. Uh, I think most of the patients and people with asthma, allergies, cold and flu, it is yeah. very difficult for them and uh, they are, you know, suddenly contracting acute febrile illness. So how can we protect ourselves from respiratory infections during this season? And most of the healthcare professionals also, this is the time on and off leave pattern will also happen, you know, during this weather. So what are the precautions? Yeah. Uh, as you say, I think uh, this is the season where we see a lot of patients get uh, I mean, their asthma gets exacerbated yes. because change in the humidity, change in the temperature, the asthma patients, they, their condition gets exaggerated. And also sinusitis gets worsened. So even allergic rhinitis, these things get worsened. So to prevent that, they should not get exposed to sudden change in the temperature, particularly in the morning. Those they should suddenly go into the uh, from the warm room to the cold atmosphere and better to protect themselves, the simple mask or things and take medicines properly. So almost you must hike up the treatment in this during this season. You have a lot of medicines to prevent asthma, prevent allergies like monitoring cast, antihistamines. If you have asthma attack, take the medicines under the guidance of your doctor, like inhalers or tablets. With worse sense in the because it's very important to prevent attacks because sometimes the asthma can be very, very severe, can be life threatening. So in the beginning only, if your asthma is not controlled with these medications, you should consult your doctor. And the season also gives you simple common cold to the severe viral pneumonias, like flu pneumonias. Yes. So don't neglect symptoms. If you have fever and symptoms like flu, you must consider doctor to take proper antiviral drugs because sometimes, in particular, in elderly people and people with low immunity, like diabetes, anemia, hypertension, other chronic diseases, these flu can be life threatening. Sometimes they even uh, lose their lives. So don't neglect flu-like symptoms. Similarly, to prevent flu, we have wonderful vaccines available now. So better always take them once in a year before the onset of the monsoon. Yes. Every year, the flu vaccine changes in its composition. So take a flu vaccine under the guidance of a doctor once in a year, particularly elderly people, people who are diabetics, and people who have low immunity should take, always take a flu vaccine to prevent this. Not only flu, you, you, we also have vaccines to prevent pneumonias. So take a pneumonia vaccine after consulting talk. And similarly, as you asked earlier, this season we get a lot of acute febrile illness. It may not be flu, it may not be dengue, it may not be chikungunya, it could be something else. Because this, this season, we get a lot of unknown viruses causing some diseases which are self-limiting. 
what was the reason? Always take treatment under your family based guidance. Very good insight, sir. And uh, moving uh, further onwards uh, to the GI issues also, we get to see a lot of GI issues like yes. food poisoning comes, uh, gastroenteritis, and uh, so do likely diarrhea and vomiting. What are the essential food safety precaution should someone take during this season? Yeah, yeah, we see a lot of uh, gastrointestinal uh, problems during the season, particularly uh, gastroenteritis, dysenteries. And food poisonings. The reason is that during the season, most of the uh, microbes which cause the disease are really, uh, I mean, uh, they, they, they proliferate better in this season. And not only that, uh, most of the issues are caused right from your lack of personal hygiene. We don't wash your hands properly before eating food or before handling food properly, like cooks or food handlers, and you get these diseases from one person or other person. And always take hot and freshly prepared food. Don't try to preserve them. Even if you preserve them, preserve them properly in a proper refrigerator. And second thing is, if you look at the uh, most of the uh, hotels and other restaurants or street food, they, they sometimes preserve the food and serve to the customer. So that's dangerous. So try to avoid food on the streets and in bad hotels. And uh, of course, even for gastroenteritis, we have vaccines, particularly for children. We have rotavirus vaccines. So those things to be taken, to be given children regularly. And whenever you get a, a diarrhea or gastroenteritis, particularly children, you should not neglect because suddenly they may collapse, they may go into shock, and sometimes they even die. Because we lose a lot of children in our country every year. Children less than five years, in lakhs of people die because of lack of proper understanding of the disease. So when you get gastroenteritis, the mothers tend not to give anything to children that were sensitive to dehydration. So try to give them ORS or fresh coconut water, or at least butter with salt, such things may prevent dehydration before you reach your family doctor or pediatrician. So to prevent gastrointestinal causes, you must hygiene, you must practice good personal hygiene, have a fresh, hot, fully prepared food, and preserve your food properly, and whenever you have symptoms, consult a doctor immediately. Yes. I think the washing about washing the vegetables and cooking methods. Yeah, of course, also. that's very important. I yes. forgot to tell you. So when you buy vegetables, wash them properly yes. in running water. Sometimes people use potassium permanganate. So see that your, uh, your uh, vegetables are not contaminated. Wash once or twice before you cook them. Cook them properly. Um, this season, the better we avoid the raw vegetables. If you take your raw vegetables, at least boil them, then take them. Don't take uh, raw vegetables like salads. And also we are uh, talking about the skin infection because as we mentioned, we get to see a lot of damp conditions, you know, and damp condition, the medium of the growth of bacteria, fungi is very likely. And injuries and accidents are also because of the fatality, the slips and falls, electric yeah. hazards are very common. So what kind of common fungal skin infections we get to see and how one should treat? I mean, they should seek the clinician or they should manage yeah. at home. See, coming to fungal infections, so what commonly we see is particularly in uh, villages, farmers, they go to field, they go to the wet field, and that causes them the fungal infection between the uh, toes of the feet. You know, yes. uh, so that causes so-called athletes food. So it's very common and it's dangerous in people with that because this can be a, a port of entry for the other infectious like bacteria and cause diabetic food. So fungal infections are very common. So to prevent that, you must check your feet every day, clean them properly, dry them. If there is a suspicion, apply anti-fungal ointment. Similarly, we get uh, patients who are having fungal infections already. It's worse since the dampness because fungus needs good moisture to grow. So in during the season, you see a lot of patients, for diabetic patients, patients who don't, don't take a regular bath. Such patients develop a lot of fungal infections, particularly tinea carporis. That is, you see fungal infections in the groins, in the axillae, sometimes all over the body. Yes. So fungal infections are very, very common during any season. If you have any problem, don't apply any steroid treatment. Go to a uh, physician and they give you proper antifungal treatments, if necessary, antifungal medicines to be taken orally. And similarly, as you told, uh, you mentioned in the slide, we see a lot of injuries and accidents in the season because the slippery area and particular elderly people, they lose balance and sometimes they fall and sustain the most common fracture what's being the fracture neck of the femur, particularly the post menopause women. And also sometimes they fall even at home when it's damp or it's wet. 
So we have to always be very careful while walking, walk slowly and take the support if necessary. Yes. And similarly, yeah, if your floor is damp, your wall is damp, some people get electrocuted. Suppose if your area for electric switchboard is uh, damp or wet, sometimes you may sustain electrocution and that can sometimes be very dangerous, can even, uh, yes. can even patients can die. So you should be very, very careful with electric connections. You should be very, very careful about your floor at home. And also when you go out while walking, you must wear proper shoes, non-slippery shoes, if necessary, take a stick along with you while walking. Yes. So way for, again, going forward, these uh, tips and practices and prevention, as uh, you rightly said, practice has to be adhered by everybody. And uh, these are the few points, hand wash, cough etiquettes. I think these are the points uh, which we have followed uh, during the COVID time. And yeah, exactly. I think slowly we all have forgot and again, yeah, we are not yeah. practicing. That's how. So uh, what are the, you know, is it necessary to take a, you know, these uh, uh, precautions? Yeah. Yes, you also, have. Also, nice... will boost our immunity against a monsoon related illness. Sir. You nicely point out this because during the COVID season, we have prevented COVID, not only COVID, during the season we have not seen flu. Yes. We have not seen other respiratory infections. The disease of tuberculosis has come down. And patients are really very healthy. The reason was that they were washing hands properly. They were having a lot of cough etiquette and they were wearing masks. Even now we should all follow this, particularly yes. people with low immunity should better wear a mask when they go out and they go into the crowded places, they travel the bus or train, better they wear a mask. This is definitely going to help you to prevent the respiratory infections, particularly flu and other viral infections. And hand wash of course is paramount important. Because it can prevent respiratory infections, after the respiratory infections, it also prevent the gas infection infections. And whenever you have some problem, particularly you should isolate yourself or you isolate your little people at home. So if you have like flu like symptoms, better to isolate yourself or at least wear a mask. And always water is very, very important. Boil and, uh, and filter water is always important during the season to prevent all waterborne infections like diarrhea, dysenteries, jaundice, and typhoid. And as we discussed earlier, please don't take food from outside oh, unless right. it's mandatory. So try to avoid outside food because you know how outside food is, how they cook, how they preserve it. It's always dangerous because we see a lot of patients who come with gastroenteritis usually have food outside. Yes. And avoid the stagnant water, of course, to prevent mosquito breeding cases. Better to um, clean up your surroundings. See that you empty your flower pots, air conditioners, or air coolers. And also in any small water pools, you almost dry them up once a week at least so that the mosquitoes don't breathe. If you have a water tank, overhead water tank, cover that with mosquito net so that mosquitoes cannot enter the and enter the water tank and breathe there. So always use uh, mosquito repellents. Mosquito nets are useful. If uh, uh, if you can prevent mosquito bite, you can prevent not only malaria, dengue, you can also sometimes you can prevent chikungunya. And in children, you can also prevent the very dangerous encephalitis. And I think use of mosquito repellents uh, for this, especially for the school children, because daytime also they are in the school. So I think yeah. this will. Yeah, as you, yeah, in school time, because it's daytime, as we discussed earlier, these dengue mosquitoes, Aedes mosquitoes, usually bite children during daytime. Daytime, yes. So most of the children get dengue infection in school. So in the school have a proper cleanliness around the school, no stagnant water. And also better, the school classrooms have some mosquito repellent, if not mosquito screens. So always uh, see that the children don't get mosquito bites in the school. So again, uh, the, as you said, not to take any over-the-counter medication because we bound to see a lot of patients that they just manage their symptoms at home. And when it is very serious, then they seek, uh, you know, doctor's appointment. So uh, we wish to say to everybody that not to take the over-the-counter medications on your own and as you discussed about the vaccination, as you said, that importance is the taking the uh, vaccination jab, flu jab, and uh, or booster, will it provide extra precautions uh, during yeah, this? Yeah, actually, yeah, this is a very important slide. Because the moment uh, someone gets fever, cold or flu, or inner viral infection, even for the matter of dengue or chikungunya, so it's, any fever is possible during the season. The moment they get fever, they first go to a medical shop, a pharmacist, and buy some antibiotic. This is really uh, unwarranted because this is dangerous, not only dangerous to the patient, dangerous to society also, because by taking antibiotics, 
the bacteria for anti for, for viral disease can cause bacterial resistance. So this abuse of the antibiotics can cause damage to the patient's body, and also it's a damage to society because it will, it will encourage the uh, antibiotic resistance. Yes. So say no to antibiotics unless it is indicated. And have a proper diagnosis. Now, it is very simple to diagnose whether it's dengue, or malaria, or flu, or chikungunya, because we have tests for them, rapid tests are there. So RDT, rapid, rapid tests are there. You can decide the disease within half an hour and treat accordingly. Yes. Patients can take paracetamol liberally before consulting the doctor. And of course, vaccines is one topic which we are country of patients and also medical community neglect. So all the medical personnel better take a flu vaccine at least once in a year for the onset of monsoon so that we can prevent at least a due incidence of flu. And even if you get a flu when you take vaccine, it's usually mild. And of course, people who are above 50 and people having medical conditions should also take the vaccine against pneumococcus, taking pneumovax. On sometimes we do preventer before the pneumovax vaccine. So always we have to take a vaccine. So pneumovax to be taken once in five years. And flu vaccine, of course, will be only once. There's nothing like booster. So take this one vaccine now and again repeat vaccine after exactly one year. So every year, as I told you, the flu vaccine composition changes because they take, um, I mean, uh, uh, a flu vaccine, they prepare according to the prevalence of virus in that year. So I uh, like to repeat flu vaccine every yearly and uh, the pneumovac every five, fifth year. So every five years. Yes. So one more thing, flu vaccine has two types of vaccine available. One is Northern Hemisphere vaccine and Southern Hemisphere vaccine. Yes. So India is Northern Hemisphere, but we take Southern Hemisphere vaccine because most of us, what we get, get, get from Southern Hemisphere. Southern. So we always take a SH, Southern Hemisphere vaccine, not Northern Hemisphere vaccine. Northern Hemisphere vaccine is given people in Northern America, Europe. But India, though we are Northern Hemisphere, we always take Southern Hemisphere vaccine because we get flu, particularly from Australia and New Zealand, from that country, from, from Thailand, you know, we get those viruses come to India first. So we take those vaccines. So uh, I truly appreciate your... Uh you know, insight about this and going forward further. How, I I mean, we like, we also see patients with chronic, uh, you know, conditions like uh, fever, flu, asthma, respiratory, CAD and all. And their safety at home is very, very, you know, major. And I think, I'm sure you must be getting a lot of calls and visit uh, because what they should do because now the onset of monsoon has started. So what is your take on this? Right, you mean to how to prevent them? And... Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. So patients with chronic conditions, patients uh, even without any chronic condition, like uh, elderly people more than 60 years of age, yeah. patients who are having hypertension, diabetes, diabetes, coronary disease, bronchial asthma, all these people should be very, very careful because any fever in these patients, it can be dengue, malaria, or simple flu, can be dangerous in these people because their condition is very flay, the immunity is low, so they get severe complications of any simple infection. So those patients should contact the doctor immediately. So this consult the physician immediately and take proper precautions because early treatment, early diagnosis always prevents complications. You can treat the patient outpatient and it becomes very easy for the patient's family, for the doctor to treat them. If you delay, the things get worse and with complications, patient may have to get hospitalized and probably patient goes into many complications and sometimes if the morbidity model is very high, in such patients. To prevent that morbidity and mortality, better always seek medical uh, consultation as soon as possible in yes. this group of people. And uh, one should be very mindful because this monsoon uh, season is going to be significantly effect affecting the mental health also. I think what activities like now, somebody has to stay indoor and it is a little challengeable for them. So, yeah. what activities would you recommend for maintaining mental well-being? Like, they yeah. should, uh, some physical form of exercise, they should do all oh, kinds of, you know, precaution measures. Yeah. Yeah, apart from having the proper food, like fresh foods, vegetables, which contain vitamin C, you should also keep yourself cool doing some meditation or exercise. And to be physically active, you can do some exercise at home, like... Uh, yeah, like treadmill or simple walking, uh, static cycle, all those things can keep you fit and spend time with your family members, keep your doors open so you get fresh air, 
and avoid the damp conditions, particularly in the bathrooms, because they can attract a lot of bacteria and fungus. And also, everyone, including particularly elderly people, children, should have very proper footwear. This helps you in two things. One is to prevent you falls from sleeping, and also it will prevent some infections like athletes' food. So wear a appropriate footwear and keep your socks very clean. So change them every day. Don't repeatedly wear them, so otherwise you get a lot of infections. And of course, you should always have a, a proper walking on uneven surface. Take a support, take a proper footwear. And at home, particularly for elderly people, always have some support in the bathrooms. So you should always some have a long handle so they can take the support of the handle while taking bath or when there are natural calls. And of course, always try to avoid exposed rain. If you had to go out in the rain, have a proper rain, proper raincoat, or at least an umbrella. Mm -hmm. And so that you can avoid uh, getting a uh, potential in the rain, so that you can avoid some health conditions. Yes. And uh, finally, we have come to the end of the session. And all what we discussed is prioritizing the self care is very important, and seeking clinician support is always important. And uh, um, as a conclusion note, sir, would you like to address uh, a message to yeah. the. Yes. Uh, as I told you in the beginning of this talk, uh, we get the maximum number of medical illnesses during the season, almost double. The reason is one is weather. Second is we don't take some proper precautions. Yes. So prevent mosquito bites. So take all the precautions what we mentioned. And always take clean water. And of course, get, get yourself vaccinated. And you get any infection or any fever, don't neglect. Don't take self-medication. Meet your doctor. Get proper tests done. And get treatment immediately. Particularly in the people with high risk group, like children and elderly people so that you will not have complications. So simple fever, don't self-treat you, because a lot of people come with a lot of optimal self-treatment, so don't self-medicate yourself, and consult your doctor and take treatment properly. So thank you so much, sir. And we, I like to request it to all the learners and viewers, don't miss out, watch out our health talks, which is, you, if you can see, common viral infections, sir has beautifully dealt with this topic as well, and webinars. Stay updated, because stay updated about the medical part also is very important. And thank you, sir, for your thank, time. Thank you very much for yeah, allowing me to talk to you. Thank, thank you very you, sir. much. I greatly uh, you know, appreciate your time, valuable time. My pleasure. Sir, OPD also is very high, and uh, thank you so much. We end the session, sir. My pleasure. Bye. Thank you.